Hi, my name is George Lumpkin, and I wanted to talk to you today about using data lake analytics with autonomous database. Every enterprise has access to huge amounts of data, and the cloud makes it much simpler to get value from that data. I'm going to show you how with autonomous database you can do that. Now, I'm mostly going to be talking about the capabilities that we have today available within Oracle's cloud. I will probably verbally talk about a few areas that we're gonna be developing in the future as well. But for the most part, everything that you see on the slides is available today and things that you can try out today on Oracle's cloud. So, you know, our goal here is that you should be able to use all your data regardless of where it's coming from, um, to help innovate, to help drive business processes, improve your profits, to reach new customers, to reduce costs. And, you know, really the thing that gets opened up in the cloud is the ability to do this more efficiently. You can reach out to more data. Uh, you can process data at higher scale and you can do more types of analytics. And so we're going to be looking at an Oracle Cloud Service Autonomous Data Warehouse. This is built upon the Oracle database that many of you are familiar with and probably used for many years. And what I wanted to be talking about in this presentation is not so much talking about the database features. I think a lot of you understand that Oracle Database provides a high performance query engine, provides sophisticated SQL processing, has scalable data loading. And I wanted to talk about something different. What does the cloud add on top of the Oracle database capabilities that you already know about? And what do we deliver with Autonomous Data Warehouse that's above and beyond perhaps the on-premise Oracle Data Warehouse that you're using today. And I'm gonna talk about really three areas in this presentation. The first one is that Autonomous Data Warehouse delivers simple and broad data ingestion, All right? You're gonna be able to get all of your business data and be able to do analysis on that business data when you're using Autonomous Data Warehouse. And I'm gonna talk about how Autonomous Data Warehouse casts a really wide net for being able to reach out to all of your data. And then I'm gonna talk about how Autonomous Data Warehouse is elastic, how it scales and adapts to your workload. And the real benefit for you is this gives you the ability to lower your infrastructure costs. This is part of the promise of the cloud, right? You know, when you have your on-premise data centers, you have to build out large configurations of hardware to handle any workload. But in the cloud, you should be paying for what your workload is actually consuming at that point in time. And we'll talk about how Atomus Data Warehouse delivers that. And then the third area that I wanted to talk about today is the simple and very sophisticated analytics, how you can easily do any type of analytics on your data and really solve every business problem that you have using autonomous data warehouse. Um, and this is all really interesting. This of course is where you get the most value from your analytics solutions um, doing the analysis. And we will look at several examples here and also give you lots of information where you can go in and, and deep dive with hands-on. Um, as I go through this presentation, I'm not going to be showing a lot of demos. I'm really focused more on the concepts of what Thomas Data Warehouse provides. But we have dozens of hands-on available so that you can go try out everything that I'm showing here. And I'll have those links at the end of this presentation. Okay, so first let's talk about data ingestion. There's lots of data available to you. How are you going to bring it under the umbrella 
of autonomous data warehouse to be able to do analysis. Um, you know, and I think maybe the starting point here is, you know, to realize that when you're in the cloud, um, there's data available everywhere, right? There's data with in your on-premise data centers that you can access. There's data within your own cloud accounts or within your own cloud tenancies. There's public data sets throughout the cloud. There's data sets in other clouds that you may be that you may have accounts in. And within autonomous data warehouse, you can access all of that data, regardless of what format that data is regardless of where that data actually resides. Um, and, you know, some of these start to become familiar for those of you who've used an Oracle database, right? You know, you have an Oracle database today. You want to create external tables or load data for files that sit outside your database. And you use a feature called external tables, right? And this is something that many Oracle customers have used for many years. Um, in the cloud, you do the same type of concept. For folks who are used to developing with SQL, you can create external tables. And we can see an example here. I'm creating an external table. It's not pointing at a file on my local file system. It's pointing in the cloud. So it's pointing at the object storage. And you can see that it's accessing a table, you know, customer sales. Uh, and the file for which that is creating an external table called customer sales. And the underlying data comes from a file sitting in an object store bucket. And it's not just any file, it's a parquet format file, right? I talked about how we can support any type of data. We support parquet files and JSON files and Avro files, in addition to like CSV or Excel files. And all of these are easy to access when they're in the cloud. And, you know, if you work with a lot of data sitting in the cloud, you don't just have sort of individual files sitting in buckets in the cloud. You'd actually created a structure, right? If you think of, if you're managing what you might think of as being a data lake, you've started to organize your files. So one common organization could be is that you have a group of files that represents one table. In this case, we're looking at a table cog called customer sales and you're and you have files corresponding to each month of new customer sales you're constantly adding new files into your object storage as you accumulate more data and so you've organized this you've created a customer sales bucket and it has directories with different files um, and within autonomous data warehouse, we recognize this. We understand these types of file formats. And we can, so you don't need to create sort of an individual external table for each file. We recognize that you have a collection of files. You've organized these files in a directory structure. And we can automatically create an, what we call an external partition table. We're creating a partition table with an Oracle based upon the file structure that you've created in the cloud. And you know, you kind of see how you start to blend. You have data sitting in a data lake. That data is represented accurately within autonomous data warehouse. So you can query it and get high performance, right? You're creating these partition tables. So you get performance optimizations like, like partition elimination. Um, and for customers, who like to write their own scripts and code. That's what these features are about. And when you sit and say, well, gee, if I have a data lake, I'm going to have tons of files, right? I, I, I need to manage the whole data lake. And we've extended autonomous data warehouse to be able to do that. We can create external tables so that you have data sitting in your object store, sitting in your data lake, an autonomous data warehouse can query those tables. Uh, you can load the data 
from the object store into your actual database itself. You can export data from your database out into the object store. And then more interestingly is we provide the capability to be able to manage these files, right? Maybe you want to move files into different directories. Maybe you want to create new files. Maybe you want to delete files. You want to see all the files that are available. All those capabilities are built directly into Autonomous Data Warehouse. And so the idea is that you don't have sort of this bright white line that says, this is data inside my database, and this is data outside my database. But you start to be able to blend this. An Autonomous Data Warehouse can sort of seamlessly access data wherever it is in the cloud and manage the files that may be even outside the database uh, in a seamless way in ways that are similar to how you manage database tables today. Now, what if you say, well, that's all fine and good, but I'm not a SQL developer. I'm not a coder. I don't want to work with scripts. And I'm just a data analyst. And so we built an entire set of tools for the data analyst. We built tools for you so that you don't have to dive into the details of external tables when you want to access data in the data lake. And we have a collection of tools, right? We have a set of built-in tools that we collectively are calling the Oracle Autonomous Data Studio which allows you to easily load data, um, to do data transformations, to cleanse that data, to browse through what data is available to you, both inside your database and outside, and do simple analysis. Now, I'm really gonna focus on the first two here around the, the load and transform, but you know we have sort of a full set of easy to use built-in tools in Autonomous Data Warehouse. Um, when you're in the cloud, you know, this isn't simply a, when we talk about Thomas Data Warehouse, it's not just a database service. It's a platform for working with all aspects of data. And so we provide a database engine, but we also provide user tool, tools for different user personas like data analysts, like data scientists to be able to work with the data in Thomas Data Warehouse. And so the simplest one is just starting with loading, right? And and again, I'm not showing demos here, but you're able to go try this out with our with our hands on very easily. And for loading, we provide really the simplest possible experience that you're just able to drag and drop files. We will show you all the files that are available within your cloud, within your object store. And you can pick which files you're interested in. You can drag and drop and choose to load those files into your autonomous data warehouse. Or if you just want to run queries on those files and leave the data where it is outside in the object store, you can create external tables. Um, and this works for all the different file formats that I just talked about, you know, Parquet formats and Avro formats and cell formats and JSON formats. And it also works across all the clouds. And I'll talk in a couple more minutes about what we're providing for multi-cloud support for data ingestion. So we have a simple data loading tool. And then we have a simple data transformation tool. Um, I think everyone realizes that a lot of the time spent is around data wrangling. It's around cleaning up your data. And within Oracle, we have a tool called Transforms built into Autonomous Data Warehouse. This is actually built on technology that Oracle has been developing for a couple of decades with Oracle Data Integrator and all the previous data integration products. So Oracle has integrated a mature and fully functional data transformation platform into the autonomous data warehouse. And you can see this has the, the sort of workflow paradigm of step-by-step -step doing map, creating transformations of your data, being able to create cleanse data, 
with a you know it's kind of drag and drop ui it's a ui developed so that you don't have to write code the the transforms is creating the underlying sql code to be able to actually do these transformations so we have the ability to reach out into the cloud and access any file in the cloud we can do this with coding or we can do this with uis and then we can access any cloud right you know we think about you're using Oracle Thomas Data Warehouse, you would be using Oracle's own cloud. You'd be using OCI, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. But your data may not all be in OCI. You know, maybe you are also using Azure Cloud or you're using AWS. And, you know, it doesn't matter from the perspective of Thomas Data Warehouse. You can query or load data that's stored in the object store of any major cloud. And it's just as easy as you're able to access data within Oracle's cloud. You need to provide Autonomous Data Warehouse with the credentials to access the other cloud's object store. But we've done integration with each of the clouds so that you're not just saying every time you go access a file sitting in Azure that you have to go basically log into object store in Azure. What we're setting up is that we've integrated with these other cloud security frameworks. Um, you know, for example, the Amazon resource names or um, the resource principles kind of things where you are saying within your Azure cloud or AWS or Google cloud platform, you're saying, I grant this autonomous data warehouse access to these buckets in my cloud. And so you've essentially um, authenticated the autonomous data warehouse to be able to access data in these other clouds. So you're able to do this securely um, and you only need to set it up one time. And so it's really you know, part and parcel of how we expect people to use autonomous data warehouse to reach out in a multi-cloud environment. And you could say, well, that sounds really cool, but you know, aren't there challenges with a multi-cloud environment? You know, what about the network bandwidth between the clouds? What about the egress costs as I access those clouds? And Oracle is tackling that problem as well. We've started with a partnership with Microsoft Azure. Uh, and what we have is that we in partnership with Azure, we have what's called the Oracle OCI Azure Interconnect. And this is high-speed connection between co-located data centers. And we have this in 12 regions to date. You can see on this map um, several of the regions that have really the, the Microsoft logo. And you can see that in Phoenix and Ashburn and London and Frankfurt and Amsterdam, as examples, that the Oracle cloud region is interconnected with the Azure cloud region. And what you get is a high bandwidth, low latency network between Oracle and Azure cloud. Uh, and we have a business agreement such that there's no egress or ingress charges. And so this allows you to access data sitting in Azure cloud know that you can access it with very high bandwidth and very low latency, and know that you can access it without any type of excess charges related to egress. You know, our long-term roadmap is to do this with other clouds, that we view that the reality of, you know, where enterprises are moving to the future, it's going to be multi-cloud. Not everyone is going to have all their data sitting in one cloud. And so we're working and really leading the market, Oracle's cloud, towards this sort of multi-cloud reality. And so the way that you should think about the implications of multi-cloud for autonomous data warehouse is, you know, you can use your autonomous data warehouse as your data lakehouse, as your source to access data 
and do analytics on data, regardless of where that data resides. If your data is in Azure or AWS, you can have your autonomous data warehouse running an OCI, managing and analyzing that data. Uh, and this is a big, you know, this is perhaps a, a different mindset, right? Folks think that, oh, I'm building a data warehouse. It's a monolithic database sitting in one cloud. And I'm bringing all that data into that one cloud. And that's where I'm doing my analysis. And what I'm conveying here is that our vision is much broader. Our vision is autonomous data warehouse. It's a platform that you can access any data across any cloud uh, and do this seamlessly. Really an enterprise-wide data lake, data lake house. Hey, the final point that I wanted to talk about regarding this idea of using cloud data is, you know, a lot of customers have had the question of, well, I could store data in object storage and collect all my data there. And that would be what architecturally a lot of customers think of as being a data lake. Or I could store data in my database. I could store it in an autonomous data warehouse. And the benefits of storing it in an autonomous data warehouse is the data is highly optimized for doing analytics, right? You, you put data into a database to get that sort of optimized high performance storage. Um, and, you know, autonomous data warehouse has been in the market for a number of years. Um, you know, you customers have looked at the price comparisons. They say, well, object storage is, you know, within OCI today is $26 per terabyte per month. It's $118 per terabyte per month for autonomous data warehouse. And therefore customers have been faced with a dilemma. Should I save money and put data in object storage? Or do I want to put this data in autonomous data warehouse and get higher performance uh, have a lot more functionality with the availability of the data. And we've recently made a price change because we don't think this dilemma should be what customers are thinking about or tackling. And so we've lowered the price of autonomous data warehouse storage to $25 per terabyte per month, essentially a parity of object storage. And what this means is the decision on where to store your analytic data should be based upon, you know, what makes the most sense. You shouldn't think about what's the cheapest place to store the data. You should think about what's the business use of the data. If your data is primarily going to be used by the autonomous data warehouse, put all of that data into autonomous data warehouse. You don't need to do any type of cost, of cost optimization based upon storage. Hey, sometimes you want to keep data in object storage. Sometimes you have not only the data warehouse accessing that data, but you're running lots of Spark jobs and other type of processing over that same data at the same time. And so it does make sense to have object storage based data lakes, but you should be choosing your architecture for a reason, you know, based upon your business requirements, not based upon the cost balance. So that was a lot, right? I mean, we talked about a lot for the data ingestion, right? And, and just to sort of wrap it up, right? For our data ingestion, it's simple. You can bring in any format of data into the autonomous data warehouse. Um, you can do this using scripts and APIs. You can do this using simple built-in tools that are really designed for the data analyst. So we fit for whatever your preference is for how you want to work with data. We can do this securely across all of your data across any cloud. And I think this is an important point that you should think you're, you get the most value from analytics when you have the broadest set of data. And so you shouldn't be limited to one cloud or sort of one silo of data. Um, and then you can do this cost effectively. You can store your data in autonomous data warehouse. 
you don't have to worry about what the costs are of being able to bring all this data into a cloud data warehouse, right? So, so that was the first thing I wanted to talk about was data ingestion. The second one I wanted to talk about is elastic scalability. And I'm really going to sort of talk about one thing here. And this, this is really simple. With an autonomous data warehouse within the cloud, you are paying for the resources that you use, right? And, and I want to contrast this with an on-prem Oracle database, right? So you, you know, if you create an on-prem Oracle database, you're putting down, you know, a hardware configuration that's got 16 CPUs and it has uh, 20 terabytes of storage. And that's what you pay for day in and day out, right? Um, and within the cloud and within autonomous data warehouse, it's completely elastic. You can say, specify the exact number of CPUs that your workload needs. You could say, I need eight CPUs and 12 terabytes of data. You can change it anytime you want. You come up to the end of the quarter and say, now I need 16 CPUs for the next five days. Scale it up to 16 CPUs. You're only paying for 16 CPUs for those five days. You scale it down. All the scaling completely online. You can change the capacity of your data warehouse anytime you want. And then we take it a step further with auto scaling. Suppose that instead of you saying, well, I want to double the size of my system as I come to the end of my, my quarter end processing, you could let Oracle Autonomous Data Warehouse do that for you. We provide auto scaling such that based upon your workload, we give you more resources so you can handle the compute capacity that you need. Uh, and we do this up to 3x of your current database size, right? So if you have an OCPU, an 8 OCPU database, we'll keep giving you resources up to 24 OCPUs based upon your workload. And then we're only going to charge you for those extra resources that you use. Uh, and these are big benefits. This is big cost benefits of using a cloud data warehouse, using autonomous data warehouse as compared to your on-prem system, or even as compared to how a lot of other uh, cloud databases work today. And this is a lot of the promise of the cloud, right? That you're able to quickly scale up. And if you think about the scenarios that I talked about with Data Lake, maybe you want to, maybe you don't have a production data warehouse. Maybe you have a data science, a data science team. And they want to go in and run in some experiments for a couple of weeks over 100 terabytes of data. Well, now they can spin up dozens or you know, over 100 database CPUs to do their processing and experiments and then shut this off and spin it down when they're done. And so they're able to have an environment that's highly dynamic and highly elastic to be able to support the analytics that they need. And all of this, for those of you who are familiar with the Oracle database, all of this is still the Oracle database, the Oracle SQL engine, all of the functionality of the Oracle database, but you're really paying for it as you use it. And so the last section I want to talk about is simple and sophisticated data analytics. And I'm going to talk about this in the context of a simple application. Right, or I shouldn't say simple application. It's actually a very sophisticated application, but it's a simple business scenario to understand. Um, this is this business scenario. This com hypothetical company is called Oracle Movie Stream. So this is a online movie streaming company. You know, much akin to all of the type of streaming services that are available when we turn on our TV today. And this company has a customer base that's been growing. Uh, they generate huge amounts of, of data based upon what their customers are viewing, what their customers have looked at. 
And I think this is a really good scenario to start to understand all the different types of analytics that could happen within one single company and within one single analytic environment. And I really wanted to call out everything that I'm going to be talking about here with this company. You can look at detailed demos and at detailed tutorials and go through all the examples yourself. This is the link. We'll have more links at the end of the presentation as well. So, you know, you can see the, the user experience of Oracle Movie Stream. This should be familiar to many of you. And I think that as you, you watch TV yourself, you understand that there's a lot going on under the cover. There's a lot of intelligence built into these types of systems. So let's look at let's look at an example. I know that this is a little small, but I think everything can be read. So we start at the top of the screen. And they have some notifications. Like right here, it says special pizza offer. Right? Where did this come from? You know, movie stream is looking at all of its customers identifying which are its best customers, identifying which customers might need to leave. Uh, and it's using that to say, well, do we want to give promotion to some customers? Maybe this customer is at risk of leaving. Let's give them a special offer, right? Um, you know, the top line of most of these types of applications is, hey, what are the popular movies, right? What's everyone else watching, right? And this is straightforward analytics. This is looking at what are the most popular across, um, you know, most popular movies in the United States today, right? Um, but then you get more interesting things, right? Well, what's the most popular movies and TV shows within my city, right? to be able to start looking at taking in spatial analysis. Where are you now? What are the other people doing that are near you, right? Um, maybe you want to look at the movies that are award winners and you're pulling data, movie stream is pulling data from third party providers that list the award winners. And that data is coming in whatever format that data comes in. Maybe it's being shipped in as JSON. So you're able to ingest and analyze JSON data as well. Um, and then you have recommendations. What movies do we recommend for you? Now that can be based upon machine learning, but a lot of times it's also based upon graph analytics. You like this movie, what other movies uh, are related to that movie that we think you're going to like. And so there's just on the home page. You can see that, you know, there's multiple types of analytics that are being done to enhance and improve the user experience. And Oracle Thomas Data Warehouse supports all of those analytics within a single platform. We really think of this as being a convert Oracle as being a converged database that is within autonomous data warehouse, within the Oracle database, we have machine learning, we have graph analytics, we have text and search capabilities, so we can process JSON data, we can do spatial analysis. All of these things are built in. And all these things are built in seamlessly. You don't have to sort of integrate a whole bunch of different APIs. You don't have to integrate a whole bunch of different database engines. You have one database engine using SQL to do all these types of analysis, to do the spatial, to do the machine learning, to do the graph analytics. And this is a lot of the real power of what Oracle provides for analytics, is that you're not having to assemble. If you look at the movie stream application, you're not having to assemble five or six different types of database engines and push data between five or six different types of database engines and write different code for five or six types of database engines. You're doing this all within a single database engine. And having the sophisticated type of analytics to do everything you want, right? You know, we talked about there was a pizza offer 
an offer for a free pizza at the top of the screen of Oracle movie at, at the top up there on Oracle movie stream. Well, that was based upon machine learning where we built models to predict churn and said, if these customers are likely to churn, then we should work to keep them and we should do promotions to keep them. Right. And so Oracle Autonomous Data Warehouse is a machine learning engine. You can use SQL, as I talked about. Sometimes data scientists want to use other languages. So we also support Python and R. And we implemented dozens of scalable machine learning algorithms within to autonomous database. We made it simpler with capabilities like AutoML to help guide the data scientist or the user on what algorithms would be best. And we can solve really any type of machine learning business problem. You know, the example we saw was about customer loyalty and retention, but you could do customer segmentation, forecasting, and so forth using machine learning as well. Similarly, we provide graph analytics built into Autonomous Data Warehouse. And what we saw with MovieStream was that graph analytics were helping to generate the movie recommendations. You know, what are the recommendations for me based upon what I've watched before? And it's really looking at doing graph analytics of the type of movies you've watched, the type of movies that other people have watched based upon your watch pattern and providing a specific list for you, for what movies, movie stream thinks you will like. And again, it's the same idea as machine learning. The Autonomous Data Warehouse is providing a full-fledged graph engine built into the system so that you can analyze how different data entities are connected, right? That you can do graph query type of languages to be able to look at the interconnections between data within your data warehouse or even anywhere across the cloud. And you can solve problems like identifying product recommendations based upon customers with similar behavioral patterns. So just to sort of summarize, and, and I should mention, I have talked about graph and machine learning at a pretty high level here. What I'd really like everyone, like you to understand is these capabilities are built into Autonomous Data Warehouse. Um, I could easily spend a full session on graph and a full session on machine learning and a full session on JSON database. But all that is there in the hands-on. You can see all the details, but I think it's more important to realize our strategy our strategy is to have a single platform that does all these things. So just to summarize, when we talk about data lake analytics with Autonomous Data Warehouse, we're providing three real benefits of the cloud. And these are benefits above and beyond what you might see with your on-prem data warehouse. You can easily ingest data from anywhere. You can ingest any type of data format. Um, from any cloud and do transformations and bring this under the umbrella of your autonomous data warehouse. You can scale to meet any of your analytic requirements while doing this cost effectively. You can control costs using the elastic and dynamic scaling of autonomous data warehouse in the cloud. And then what we just saw is you can do any type of data analytics. You can solve all the data analytics for a scenario like our movie hypothetical movie stream company with a single platform, do this scalably and cost effectively. And it's a lot more productive and easier to do it. So we have lots more information on getting started with Autonomous Data Warehouse, looking at the examples and live labs that we have. You also have the avail availability to get started on all of this for free. We have free version of Autonomous Data Warehouse. Um, you can get started today and try out all the functionality that I described. 
So thank you very much. I hope that you will try Autonomous Data Warehouse and try out our tutorials and live labs. And hope you enjoyed this presentation.